What's going on, booktube, booktubers, family, and friends? Welcome to Reviews from the Six. My name is Cedric, but you can call me Seti Said, and you already know what to do since it's YouTube, right? Hit that subscribe button, become tribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment on what you think about Transmetropolitan, book one, and the other issues, if you can, in this type of content, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. So, I wanted to be transparent with you guys. This is my first read through of Transmetropolitan and anything from DC Vertigo. So it was like, you know, I was a virgin in several categories here. What made me want to pick up this book, though, is I was looking for something that was comedic, something that was offensive and something that replicated today's society. And this came pretty, pretty close. So after doing a lot of Google research <laughs> and asking a couple of comic nerds in a couple groups, um, a lot of people said, pick up Trans Metropolitan, right? So I go to the bookstore or the comic book store, pick it up. I go to the register and the guy says, oh my God, if you love mature content, you're going to love it. And he goes into his whole spiel, right? So I'm really amped up for it. I'm like, I can't wait to read it. And when I read it, I wasn't disappointed, but it wasn't what I thought it would be, but it was still good. So pretty much you have a character by the name of Spider Jerusalem. He lives in, or I was going to start on his glasses as you see me going here. I was getting ready to just start explaining him the character, but this is the aftermath, right? So what happens with Spider Jerusalem is he's a journalist and he's covering like the most dangerous situations in L.A., which they refer to it as Angelus 98 or 89 or something like that in, in this book. So he's like doing all the big stories like terrorism and, you know, bank fraud and, you know, everything to do with the wealthy. And he's just exploiting everyone, politicians, everything. So it gets a little too hot, which I assume because they really don't go into much detail about it. All you know is that when you open the book, he is living in the mountains. And I automatically thought Charles Manson. So I'm going to show you what he looked like while he was still in the mountains because he was like a mountain man. Now, here it is right here. So he just gave me Charles Manson vibes, y'all, right? I mean, from the way he thought and everything. So this is a post-apocalyptic world, which you can kind of see here, you know? Everything is digitized. There's androids. There's aliens. I mean, there's everything in this city. So... It reminded me of the Charles Manson story where he said that because of the L.A. riots between, you know, the blacks and the cops, at least, or the African-Americans on black. So I could say whatever I want to say um, with the blacks, that the blacks were going to win the war and him and his followers would go to an under K or underground solace until it was over. They would come back, pat the black man on his kinky head. That's Charles Manson's words, pat him on his kinky head and take the keys to the kingdom and rule the city. So it's kind of like that he had to look, he moved away because a lot of things were going bad within society, a lot of riots, a lot of fights, um, all of that. So of course he owes a publisher a whole lot of money. So that's the whole reason why he leaves, but they find him, they reach him and they're like, no, you owe us that money. Come back here take care of the, you owe us some stories, right? There's a lot going on in the city right now and we need to get to the bottom of it. We need stories. So he's, he agrees. Now this is the aftermath. So what I like about it is that they set him up in a hotel and you know, all these gadgets and appliances, they do everything for him. So he showers, he shaves, gets cleaned up. And what I like most about this character, and it, it's not really talked about a lot in the comic is his glasses. Like, you see it's green and then you see it's red, right? So since he's a journalist, this allows him to record whatever he sees and then of course take pictures of whatever he sees. So they really don't go into detail how it happens, you know, like he doesn't blink or anything like that, which I thought would have been cool that they just went into a little bit of detail like that, right? By the way, his name is Spider Jerusalem, which is why you see the spider on his head. Bam, right there, you know? So, you can see the city in the background is post-apocalyptic. It's kind of dangerous. It looks dirty. It's bummy, all that good stuff. When it comes to the cigarettes, there is a, um, not a caveat, but the reference in the comic is that everybody knows that it's cancer, 
right so now the cigarettes are actually called whatever type of cancer it is which is hilarious bro like some of them are called leukemia and you know so forth leukemia slims and all that good stuff but that was one interesting thing about it too was that in this day and age everyone has the cancer gene and everyone has to take a cancer pill to get rid of it or to live every day which is pretty much spot on with today's society right the food um the smokes everything i mean you can get cancer pretty much from you know they got skin cancer now the sun so everything is out to kill you too in this comic which i kind of liked but that's pretty much the story on spider he's a journalist he owes somebody a lot of money he comes back into the city to crack some big stories and what i like most about this is that it allows you to see it from a journalist point of view i've always wanted to go to school for journalism when i was younger but now that I'm older and I know what the job entails and just reading up on it, I don't want it at all. But it helps you into the mind of a journalist when they are creating a story, right? Are they going to spin the story? Are they going to put 110, which means, you know, fabricate it or put some extra onto it? Are they going to exaggerate? Are they going to tell a white lie? Like, you just don't know what their point of view is. And they can have the truth. You know, that's the thing. Or they could be telling you a whole bunch of BS just because they're bored and they need a long story to create that's what I liked about it. Now, like I said, I wanted something that was comedic and that's pretty much all the comedic aspects of it is that, you know, the cigarettes have the cancerous names, um, the things that are going on in the city. So for example, when it comes to the today to so or today's society, you have a lot of debates and a lot of agendas and a lot of preferences and, you know, a lot of identities out there in today's world, which I have nothing against, but my first introduction into it, into this comic was they have a, a species called the transients or translucents or something like that, which is pretty much transsexual, which I don't think trans metropolitan has anything to do with the transsexual aspect of it, but this part does. And they're in skid row, which is to me supposed to be skid row, right? Where all the homeless people are in LA or most of the, the, the property written communities are. So, that's where the police, they go down there, they beat up, they kill everybody, you know, they rape everyone. They do all these things to them, right? And get away with it. I mean, people's rights are taken away. They're treated like less than cattle. And I mean, they're not even looked at as citizens anymore. So what's happening is that these people are dying because they can't get medication and all that. So there's a race of alien that is dying as well. And the alien, and it, it's kind of hazy. Like I said, I kind of wish they dove into more detail in book one, and it's probably in the other books, but there's a race of alien that's dying off. And they make an agreement with the, the people in that area that, hey, if you inject my blood into your system and allow me to live within you, we'll keep you healthy where you don't have an appetite, you won't age, you won't die, all that good stuff. So they do it. So they become trans, which... If I can't find a picture in here real quick, I'll just go ahead and, oh, here you go, right here, actually. You see how it's like half alien, half human? But then that's the thing, too, as the story progresses, you don't know if it's male, if it's female, and the agenda is to spread as many of them as they can. So that's what he starts doing, right? He starts pretty much f having his way with his followers and anyone in the city because you know he's the younger one now you know he he's been blessed by the best aliens dna right and it's kind of confusing because they don't know what to identify as and I, I i did enjoy that part of the story now when it comes to like the racial aspect of it there wasn't a whole lot i mean he kept referencing um the africans that cook dinner and maybe because i'm not familiar where the arthur is from Garth Enos, maybe in his area, you know, it, it's probably like a, a joke or something like that. But, or yeah, I, I just didn't understand it. But, you know, he would always be like, go down there and pick that up from the Africans or the Africans got it over there, you know. But they did um, highlight like the Black Lives Matter stuff or protest in general. I don't want to just say Black Lives Matter, but just protest where minorities. And they use that with the transients too. So they hook up with the other people of the city and they're just getting beat the mess out of y'all. Like I said, just thump, ran through, murdered, hung, all that stuff, man. So it kind of shows that even though those people were fighting for the good, they were still looked at as, as less than, you know, they were looked at as the, the trans or UNs or whatever they want to be called in the comic. 
Um, so yeah, that's really it. I mean, I think you do have like an Asian joke in there, but more so when it comes to like the racial aspect, it's almost like humans against clones and, and, and droids and stuff like that. Like even the cats are mutated, which is very, very weird. When it comes to the comedy, there are a few jokes in here that I really did like. It, you won't laugh hysterically, but you're going to be like, ha, you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, that was pretty clever, you know? But that's pretty much it, you know, without going into like full detail and giving a lot of way. It, it let me see what society looked like through a journalist's eyes and what a journalist knows are they actually putting the truth out there? You know, are they lying to people? Are they getting paid for this story? You know, are they doing anything to help the situations? Are they adding fuel to the fire? You know, stuff like that. But if you are looking for something that's offensive, you will, especially in book one. Like I said, it's just book one. There's three of them, I believe. So it did go into like the sexuality aspect. And I expect the other three issues to be other things. Now you do have things about uh, gender and class in here too. So with gender, you know, they did look at women as being less than, you know, they had all the women working in brothels or strip clubs if they weren't homeless. So there's that. But yeah, man, I, I really did like it. Here goes some of the art. I, didn't, I haven't showed you guys any of the art, but I'm going to show you some. I like the art, man. Like I was more caught up in the art and like the jokes and then the perspective. So yeah, I, I really did enjoy y'all. And, and he cusses a lot, y'all. He cusses a lot, he uses a lot of slurs. So definitely pick this up if you're looking for something more mature. Like I said, it wasn't as mature as I thought it would be, but it was pretty good, y'all. I like it. I think I will pick up um, book two. I don't know, but what do you guys think? But since we're at the end of the video, you already know what to do, y'all. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The vibe brought you here today. Also, leave me a comment on what you think about today's review and impression of Transmetropolitan. Have you read it? Is book two worth the pick up? Let me know, y'all, what's going down. Also, like the video, because if you don't like it, then YouTube won't think you like this content and it won't share it. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads, because we are dropping some heat when it comes to the content, baby. We are diversifying the portfolio. With that being said, peace, love, and blessings.